Welcome everyone to Stepping Stones to AAC Dreams. I'm Heather Prenevo and I have Brittany Tony with me as usual. Everyone. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, if it's your first time attending a Stepping Stones, welcome. We have some fun things planned. And if you uh, have attended regularly with us, we are super excited to share another activity tonight with you. One of our favorite things is our Stepping Stones to AAC Bitmoji Classroom. As I mentioned earlier, I'm Heather Prenevo. I'm a speech language pathologist and an AT consultant for Saltillo in Minnesota and Wisconsin. I will, will be, I am, the Bitmoji on the left. And then I have with me my friend. Brittany Tony. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us again or if you're new welcome um i am the bitmoji on the right um i am a speech language pathologist and assistive technology consultant for saltillo as well and i support saltillo products in southwestern ohio northern kentucky and indiana so i got a got a few there but i live in cincinnati so um, as Heather mentioned, this is our Stepping Stones to AAC classroom. If you haven't joined us before, take a look at the bookshelf. These indicate what trainings we have done in the past or trainings that we will be doing coming up. So in a little bit, um, we will post the, the link for you to download and go to our interactive classroom. And some of these other things that you see on the wall here are also interactive, such as the low tech board you see there, um, the core word go on the wall. And again, if you can click on the icons in the bookshelf, that means it'll take you to the training that's already happened. So be sure to check that out if you've missed some and would like to view them or direct families or colleagues to this classroom on the interactive classroom so they can take a look as well. We like to talk about AAC as being a journey. And so we hope that stepping stones can be part of that journey. So even if it's just the beginning steps for you, or if you've been on this journey for a little while, um, we're all at different places and hopefully the strategies and the things we talk about will help you on your journey. So let's begin. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about and identifying core words and strategies that we can model while talking about dreams for the future. So this is just a fun topic we thought of, um, especially with Martin Luther King Day recently. So we, this is, this handout is in your materials tab. This is our, what we call our planning form, our stepping stones to AAC planning guide. This just helps us think about what words we can choose that are core words, some questions and comments that we can use with those core words, and then how we can model those words on a device or low tech board for our AEC user. So be sure to download that. You can fill then, those out with us as we go along or save a blank one for use later. Yes. And then we also have our, our, this is just a reference guide. So our Stepping Stones to AAC reference sheet. This is just something that you can refer back to later on after the training. Or again, if you have a colleague or another family member that wasn't able to attend the training tonight, we have this available for them as well to help them know how to use the the planning form and how to really model these core words given a specific theme. So that's what that is. Awesome. So as Brittany mentioned, we decided tonight's theme to be about dreams. And the cool thing I think when we think about dreams is it was inspired by having Martin Luther King Day recently and talking about those kind of dreams. We can talk about dreams we've had in our sleep 
Um, dreams can talk about jobs we want, places we want to go, things we want to do. And what I personally really like is that we can then adjust this for a lot of different age levels, a lot of different language levels. So I often would hear, well, this is great, but what about for this age group? So uh, some of our activities you know, are geared towards the younger kids and those concepts and those words. Core vocabulary we can use with any age. If we've got kiddos who maybe don't understand the concept of having a dream or wanting to do things, we can adjust that and talk about, you know, what do you like? What do you not like? And build up towards um, the idea of dreams. So I'm going to demonstrate and the videos today, the examples I'm using, uh, we're kind of aiming for like older elementary and middle school, high school age. But again, we can adjust our language, adjust our words, add some more visual supports, and still be able to talk about these kinds of things with them. And there's lots of room for expanding. We can add more details as they um, progress through it. The third handout that you guys have is this uh, low tech or core board. It's based on WordPower 60 basic, um, but it has 96 locations. So if you haven't seen this before, it's a great resource tool as you are learning about core vocabulary, as you're trying to model. Um, if your child doesn't like having you touch their device, you could model on this low tech board and show them where some of these words are. As we watch the first video, you can use this to be thinking about what are some of the words you hear uh, most often. And the words that are on this are mainly core words, and so we can use those, like we said, in a variety of different things. Um, and this gives you an idea to think about what words can I target when I'm doing my activities. So you just let me know. Guys. Yeah, we'll start out with this video there um it's just a short little clip think about and you can chat it in the window or jot it down what are some of the core words that might be useful for us to model or talk about and just let me know if you have trouble hearing the video and i'll turn it up perfect let's talk about what we want to be what do we dream about being when we get older what do you want to be Here's some different jobs. Let's talk about if we like them or don't like them. Police officers. I do like police officers. Teachers. I like teachers. They're very helpful. I want to be a teacher. Cooks. I don't like cooking. I don't want to be a cook. Sales clerk. Oh, I have to count money. I don't like counting money. Maintenance worker. I like that they are very helpful. I don't want to be a maintenance worker and work outside, though. Garbage truck driver. They work with lots of smelly garbage. I don't like that. I don't want to be a garbage truck driver. Zookeeper. I do like animals. I don't want to be a zookeeper. There's too many big animals. Football player. I don't want to be a football player. I don't like run. Let's talk about why we like those things. You can talk about their character traits. What kind of person are they? When you're a police officer, you have to be brave. I am brave. Teachers are very, very smart. We can say, I am intelligent. When you make lots of different foods, you have to be creative. I am creative. When you work with money, you have to be honest. You need to count the money correctly. Maintenance workers, they're very responsible. They do lots of hard work. Garbage truck drivers, they are very helpful. I'm helpful too. Zookeepers are very kind to animals. Football players are very athletic. I can be athletic when I run. I don't like it though. 
So again, that's just kind of a brief um, idea, something that you could do at home or for those that are working in the schools virtually, um, you can do those Google Slides virtually. So I thought that was kind of a fun way to look at jobs and character traits. So Brittany's going to be typing for us on the screen tonight. What are some core words that you heard me using during that? You can just type it away in the chat window. Want. Mm -hmm. I am what not mm -hmm. do. Those are good. Like, mm -hmm. help. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> core words there, huh? Don't. Exactly. You guys are on a roll. Thank you. Yeah, so the nice thing is, yes, we can jot down as many words as we want. Do we have to target all those when we're modeling? Nope, but it's good to have an idea of the variety of words we can use. So step two is then looking at open-ended questions. Uh, if you're not familiar, open-ended questions, um, think of them as the way we can encourage communication. They tend not to be yes-no related questions. We want to encourage um, more coming from it. We want to have that ability to keep things going. So on it, we want to write down an open-ended question for each of our targeted core words. So it can be questions that either have our core word in it or their answer requires a core word. So for example, we're going to quiz you guys, which one of these would be an open-ended question? Why do you like it? Or should we do more? Question one or question two? Which one's an open-ended question? Denise says number one. Sheila says number one. Danielle, Christy, yes. Good job. So, and we know why is a hard one, um, but the answers as we click on, you know, are, can be endless. Why do we like it? It's fun. It's cool. It's scary. If you like scary things, you know, we can really beef up our vocabulary with why questions. Uh, but should we do more? You get a yes or a no. And that's kind of all we can talk about, right? <laughs> Unless we want to say, well, why should we do more? Then we can bring it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So with those, I chose to fill in the, my sheet with I like and want for tonight. So can you think of open-ended questions for the word I? And it can have I in the question or your answer or your sentence that you're going to say has I. And we could use that question, Lisa. Why do you like it? Mm -hmm. Because you would start your response with I like it because if we're building language. Yeah. Any other questions you can think of for I? Or if you think about some of the questions I asked, what do you want to do? Very good. Yep. I want to. We could even change that to what do you like? Or yeah. what don't you like? We can start with some negatives too. <laughs> what don't you like on the screen? Sometimes it's fun to weed out those ones. <laughs> Yes. We can repeat. So it's okay that we used the we don't what don't you like? We could use that as our question down there too. I am all about more bang for our buck, right? Yeah, and sometimes the more times you repeat a phrase or sentence or question for a child on a device or even an adolescent or adult. AAC user, the more they're going to see that pattern that you use to get there. And so they're going to learn that word more than if you only did it once. So. Yes, totally agree. Any other questions you can think of with the word like? And you could even be just thinking of other ways to phrase a question. So if we don't want to use the longer sentences, um, we can, you know, you like, it could just be as simple as, you know, that you like. Yeah. I like, I like it. <laughs> yeah. How about for want? 
I see Danielle typed, what do you want to do? That can be a question we use again. Mm -hmm. What do you want to be? Where do you want to go? That one, I could go on and on, I think. <laughs> yeah. Good. So you guys got the idea there. The next step in that section is um, possible comments. And so this can be a couple different things. If your child is not yet responding to those questions, so you ask the question, you model it on your device, and they're not responding yet, which is totally fine because we're it's something we work towards, we can model the comment or the response to that question um, to show them what that looks like. So if we say, what do you want to do? And you wait, hmm, I want to, and then model what your response would be to the question. It can also just be comments about the activity. So you can have kind of that balance of different things jotted down. So these planning tools are kind of preparing you to think ahead what you might say so you don't have to really worry about it and stress over it um, in the heat of the moment. Writing down one or two comments that you can model, you know, just helps again as you're Sorry. planning through. No, you're good. Um, and then the last little tip and trick we have is keeping it at or just above their language level. And what we mean by that is if your child um, or your student is just doing one, one, two words, uh, one button, one to two buttons on their device, we only want to model about two to three words beyond what they're currently saying. So we don't want to be modeling complete long sentences if they're just at that one to two word uh, phrase right now. We want to show them what they can do and we want to expand it. So if they're doing two words, let's show them three or four words so that they can learn how to expand that, we can show them what comes next. So we'll jot down and you can share out some ideas. What are some comments for like that we can model? I'm sorry, I. <laughs> I like that, good. I like it. Mm -hmm. I want. What about you, you like? like? Mm hmm. Like he that. likes. Nice. Yes. Perfect. Oh, sorry. I moved. <laughs> I moved on to like, I think. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> And we, yes, so again, we can reuse. You like, he likes, I like outside, I like inside. As Brittany mentioned, that repetition is huge. And so if we can use it in a variety of ways, kind of with that activity, you know, I'm constantly able to use, I like or I don't like, and we show them and we talk with them about it. And then we let them answer. How about some want some comments? We can really keep Brittany busy with this one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Get ahead of myself and start typing other things. <laughs> hey, you know. How about um, want to be? I want what? to play. I want yeah. that. Want to be. Yes. I was just going to say, this is a perfect time to add those. I want blues. I blues. Want blues. Yes. <laughs> I was just talking about blues clues last week with my nephew. <laughs> He's 20. He used to love Blue's Clues. <laughs> so thank you, Denise. That makes me smile. So yeah, that one is so... I know. It's timeless. Perfect. So you guys got the idea there. Step three here is... Um, Filling in and giving yourself those uh, one, two, three, four, whatever it is your level is at, your child's la level is at, jotting down those ideas. So again, we're planning ahead so that we don't have to worry about it in the moment as we're trying to model. So I filled in here some examples of how it would look with just one word if I'm modeling two words. Um, and I think we've talked about before modeling on the device and saying the sentence. It's okay if we're just touching the device for I or like, but we're saying our whole sentence. 
um, and getting used to that. So again, planning this ahead, we get um, get that in our head. We know what we can say. And actually, you won't see it in the next video, but I have this filled out sheet that I planned ahead off to the side from the video camera. So again, I could be thinking, what are some of those other sentences I came up with ahead of time that maybe I wouldn't have thought of during the activity? I see a question from Denise. How about providing visual options as a way to help with modeling? Yes. Um, offering two or three options, depending upon what it is. By all means, yes. I, um, if you noticed in the little Google slide that I made, having some visual, you know, I like, don't like, or the symbol pathways, uh, we can show you guys where to go to get chat editor on a PC computer um, so that you could create some visual pathways to to model um, to show them those different options and then they can find it on their device. Yep. Yeah, and just having those options, as you're saying, Denise, um, maybe options of the career choices, if, if that's what you're doing mm -hmm. with your student and having that just out and available for them using those symbol pathways for sure. I know that was actually an assessment that I had to give a couple students that I worked with um, that were nonverbal. <laughs> what do they want to be when they grow up? So, yes, yeah. I was thinking of that and I actually got to check in on that student that I did that assessment for this week. So, it was oh, kind of fun. <laughs> so, next step is then finding those words on your device or your low tech board. And so, We've got little highlighters here where you can see what words I'm modeling. So again, planning ahead, knowing where those words are so you don't have to scan and find those words because we often hear it's so overwhelming with all these words, but there's so much power in having those words on WordPower 60 Basics. So prep yourself, find it, circle it. You'll see in the upcoming video, I actually took a dry erase marker on my laminated board and I circled the words that I was going to be targeting. So if you wanna follow along and practice modeling on your board, your child's device, see how you do with some of your sentences that you jotted down um, and we'll keep an eye on time and see if we get through all our examples. Let's talk about dreams. What do you want to be when you get older? Let's look at these jobs. Do you like them or don't like them? Police, I like it. I like police officers. Teachers, I like teachers. I want to be a teacher. Cook. I don't like cooking. I don't want to be a cook. What about a sales clerk? I don't like counting money. I don't like it at all. How about a maintenance worker? Do you like it? I like working outside. Do you want to be a maintenance worker? Garbage truck driver. They are very busy. I don't like smelly garbage though. That would be kind of gross. A zookeeper. I like skip ahead a little bit. Sir. Teachers. I am. Let's find intelligent. It starts with an I. Intelligent. They're very, very smart. And cooks. They are very creative. They come up with lots of different kinds of foods. I am creative when I'm cooking. When you work with money, you have to be honest and do the right thing. I am honest. How about the maintenance worker? They're very responsible. I am, let's find responsible. Oh, it starts with an R, responsible. Garbage truck drivers are very helpful cleaning up the garbage. Let's find helpful. Starts with an H, helpful. 
I am helpful when I'm cleaning up garbage. Zookeepers have to be very kind to take care of those animals. I am kind. You got the idea there. And the extra words that you saw I pulled in, I printed those off of chat editor under reading. There is a story concepts page that has all of those character traits available all on those two pages. So I printed those out um, to use for tonight. And I wanted to share just some extra ideas. Um, as I talked about earlier, you know, depending upon what level you're at and if you wanted to expand things and then also find some books, here's some books that um, highly recommend for all ages that talk about dreams. So, you know, that is my dream, the darkest dark talking about, you know, dreaming of being an astronaut, being an architect, some different job ideas, um, a dancer, as well as on the next slide are some dream, um, books that you can use to talk about character traits. And um, Tomorrow I'll Be Brave and She's Got This are part of our 2020 Saltillo calendar, um, books that were recommended um, to use. And so there's a read along with some core word activities that you could do kind of an extension activity and keep digging through those. And then Happy Dreamer is just kind of a fun book that has a lot of great traits in it um, and talking about what I dream to be. So giving you guys a few more ideas of how you can expand things. With that, we did really good on time tonight. After watching those videos, after practicing, what questions do you still have? Time to do some reflecting. How did it feel as you practice? What are you noticing if you've done this before? Uh, what's getting easier? What's getting hard? You know, still kind of hard. And what are your next steps? What are your plans for taking any of our stepping stones to AAC strategies with you. Yes, we can go back and show that first book list, Lisa. Sure. And these are just ones I've heard about or um, I've seen. So, you know, nothing <laughs> concrete or exhaustive, but um, some great books that are out there. And I like to find ones that I can use for lots of different age groups. I used to work with middle school, high school, and 18 to 21 year olds. So I like to find things that I can use, even if their language levels are, you know, not at that grade level yet, but we can still tackle these fun ideas. Yes, I think yeah. so too, Lisa. Yeah, for sure. Any other questions or thoughts? You'll be offering the Playbill training again. Um, I don't know if we're offering it live again. We haven't um, gotten the next round of scheduling set up, but we do have the recorded webinar. I did put the bit.ly link into the chat window. If you scroll back, you can copy and paste or click on it and go to our interactive classroom. And if you click on the jar of Play-Doh, it'll take you to the recorded version um, so that you could see that one again. And our next one, our next training, which is next week, right? Um, is it next week? I, think it's I don't know. My weeks are. <laughs> I know. My weeks. Uh, my yeah, I think you're right. My weeks are coming like all together. But anyway, look for us. <laughs> um, look for it on our, you know, how you registered for this training on our website, and we're doing shapes and colors next time, which is kind of, you know, definitely pre-k you can definitely extend that to other ages but that would be another one that would be good yeah so. i was thinking of ways we could take that into valentine's so yeah hint <laughs> thank you guys for um your comments yes reading a book and doing an activity around dream jobs that's always fun teaching them something new too if there's other activities or other jobs I uh, like yeah. this activity it provides opportunities for social language yes i agree you can talk about for sure. So much. It really opens up different possibilities. Well, we yeah, appreciate and you guys taking time to meet with us tonight again. If you have questions, reach out to Brittany or I, or uh, follow along with us on this journey. We'll see you yes, in a couple thank weeks. You. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.